And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we're back in a sort of capacity. Um, Everybody's going to be like, I don't know what you're talking about at this point. Was, well, y- well, yeah. This well, is by, not going to come out time, for quite some time. By the time this comes out, it will probably be, I think, June, I think. It'll be early, like, early June. Or no, mid-June. It'll be actually around my birthday. So, uh, yeah. That'll... Uh, so, if uh, the COVID thing is still going on, which it probably is because, you know, it's, you know, panic and craziness all over the world. No one can tell the truth. No one knows what the fuck's going on. And uh, it's, it's just like whose line is anyway. The points don't matter and, every, and everything's made up and the points don't matter. Ugh. And that's kind of what it feels like nowadays. Because between the CDC lying, WHO lying, and YouTube banning everybody who doesn't who gives out quote-unquote false information that doesn't follow what the who declares like actual information keep in mind who is the one the ones who said sunlight doesn't kill it i mean the best thing about a dead horse is you can just keep beating it yes much like michael jackson just beat it oh i thought sorry i know no no. i just had this picture of i mean i can tell you like i was like I can tell you for sure it's not a hoax, at least. Well, so, it's no. no, it's there's some. It, it is a dangerous to... virus that's actually killed people. Like that, I mean, I if if you're gonna be like, oh, I don't know anybody that's killed. Well, like my b- best friend has a manager at work that got it, was perfectly healthy otherwise, and he ain't here anymore. Yeah, he's and, gone and, to the afterlife. And that's and that's shitty, dude. I mean, it's it, but it doesn't stop people from lying about you know the facts and saying things that they think that they want to be true. That's the thing. A lot of it is agenda-based, and they want shit to be true instead of the actual facts, which they actually have actual evidence of. Instead, they hold that back, and they report what they want. And thus, misinformation builds and builds and builds, and all of a sudden, you got an avalanche on your hands, a true avalanche of shit. That's basically to the point where, like, you can't really tell what is and isn't true about it. Well, yeah. I mean, given that hospitals for every diagnosis in the country get a uh, a stipend for every case that they declare in their hospital, I mean, you're going to tell me that hospitals aren't saying, you know, this guy's got the common cold. No, he's got coronavirus. Just put it on the just put it on the books as coronavirus. And next thing you know, hey, oh, we give the guy a couple hundred uh, dollars worth of medication to treat himself for that common cold, and then the hospital keeps the rest. And that stipend, from what I understand, is like thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, because I saw someone afterwards, like, um, basically say that, yeah, they're like basically that's true. They're getting that extra money if they do that, but there's no evidence that they are doing that. Well, there's no evidence that they are, and there's no evidence that there isn't. There's no oversight. That's the thing. Where there's no oversight, they they can't prove it and they can't disprove it. I mean, if you ask me. Oversight. I mean, like public oversight. The public should just be like, "Does this guy actually have coronavirus?" I mean, what does the chart say? I mean, the chart probably says whatever they wanted it to say. Well, yeah. I mean, so true. True. What are, not what, not too what long ago, the make? CDC site actually redacted some of their numbers of like pure COVID cases or like COVID with other comorbidities <laughs> and stuff. So that was kind of interesting. So just like what China's doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, they, they, they scaled it down, so it was like what they were saying was the case, and then I'm sure it's changed now, but it dropped to, like, pure COVID cases was, like, only, like, 11,000-something. I mean, I'm sure it's changed now. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was... Which... I was looking at that data a couple weeks ago. At least they're not going the Chinese route and just, like, complete media blackout and, you know, destroying everybody's cell phones so they can't say anything. I don't know what's going on over there, but it's wacky. It is. Um, What's uh, the suspicious thing to me on that part is that um, basically there are a hundred, I think, countries that are like, yeah, we want to come over. We want to send a crew over to China to basically do an investigation and try to figure (laughs) out exactly 100 percent for sure where it came from and how it happened. Yeah. And And China's China's, yeah, China's president's like, that's not necessary. That's not necessary. Sure thing, Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. It's just kind of like if you got nothing to hide, why are you trying to hide stuff? Oh, I don't think you should come over. I think you should just mind your own business. Meanwhile, I'm going to reopen the wet markets and ensure that this never happens again by just saying that it won't. That's kind of how we operate over here. 
Oh, bother. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I just... <laughs> it's hard not to make fun of Didn't that somebody guy. get in trouble for doing South that? South Park. They got banned in China for that. Oh, okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and here's oh, the thing. If, I don't and, think we really give that much of crap if we get banned in China, do we? Our audience in China is nothing, dude. Yeah. Literally, the only people who watch us are like people in Hong Kong, and they're not trapped behind the Great Firewall. And, and honestly, people in Hong Kong love the fact that we make fun of China because Hong Kongers do not like China, mainland China. Same thing with Macau. And in 50 years, whenever the, uh, whenever the uh, agreement is up between you know the independent financial districts, there's going to be heads rolling because China's going to want to get Hong Kong and their good credit mm-hmm. and Macau and their gambling, and they're going to want to absorb that into the one China government. And yeah, well, that is if the world does make it 50 years. I vote, I, I, I elect that, you know, we're all just going to nuke each other by the time we get to like uh, 20, uh, I think it's like 2035, whenever we, whenever Skynet comes online. Yeah, but anyway, enough existential dread. Let's see, let's watch some Rick and Morty. It will be fun to see like in like their new season when they like do something based on the COVID scare. It'll be pretty interesting. Apparently they already have. Oh, have they? Yeah. Oh, boy. I feel like Rick is the one that releases it. <laughs> he, he's like, oh, oh, welcome to the wet market in, in, in China, Morty. Uh, 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 in Wuhan. Uh, we're in Wuhan now, right? This is Wuhan. You are correct. Yeah, we're in Wuhan, Morty. Um, oh, geez, Rick. I don't know about this. I think the... Uh, uh, is that a bat? Are people actually eating bats here? Uh, don't worry about it, Morty. Don't worry about it. Here, uh, actually, if you really want to eat a bat here, let me s- s- sterilize it real quick. Let me give it a shot. Uh, uh, uh-oh. Okay. Run, Morty! Run! <laughs> I feel like that would, yeah, that would be something like that. Yeah. God. Anyway, let's get to it. I, Morty Smith, invoke my right to choose one in every ten Rick and Morty God. adventures. Read them and week. Fucking damn it. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you. Yes! Vindicator command ship beacon received. We're doing Vindicators too! Whoops. Uh-oh. Uh, Marty, you might want to freeze some sperm. <laughs> <laughs> we have reason to believe his stronghold is located on my balls. Rick. The Terranium <laughs> system. Once World place, ender. Million ants. So your origin is what? You, you, you fell into a vat of redundancy? <laughs> God damn. You know <laughs> After his parents' tragic death in a railroad accident, he gained the power to summon ghost trains. It's not all bad, though. They were spared, having to see their grown son wear a whistle. God damn! They lost Lady Katana, Calypso, Diablo Verde. Yikes. Yeah, things did feel less diverse in there. This article says the reason they were involved was personality conflicts. Crocubot, why don't you escort Mr. Sanchez to a more comfortable spot so that someone can... Clean up his diarrhea. Gross. Well, Gross. I'm nervous about my first mission. Actually, Noob Noob, you have a new mission. God damn. Vindicators, <laughs> prepare for arrival. Morty, the Vindicators and I had a chat this morning, and I'm afraid we need to make a little change. Are you all right? Yes. I only lost 400 ants. My queen is laying more. I am back to one million ants. Someone wake <laughs> up, Sanchez. Crap. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> I could have just used a ghost train. Hey, everybody, the ghost train guy would have used a ghost train. Man, fuck you. Is there coffee? <laughs> hey, Morty, can you be a pal? Grandpa left his coffee maker on the ship. Morty and I have to meet a lady comet, a monorail man, two assholes, and a full alligator in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Of course. Jesus, man. If you guys are watching this, you're, you know, the Vindicators. So now that we know that Rick, you guys... So he trapped him in some you? drunk Obviously, Moriarty house of horrors? I think. Blackout. Obviously. Are you seriously sawing the Vindicators? <laughs> Morty, I'm a drunk, not a hack. You break the rules, yes. lose the game, or try to leave, you will die. Like in... Uh, saw. Well, I, I think we've seen enough. I'll just figure out how to unplug it. Here we go. Room number one. Sexy drinking, not this psycho trailer park shit. <laughs> Stay calm. Relatable. 
Oh. Oh. Jesus, man. <laughs> Where the fuck is the lead wire? Is Thank it? you. I appreciate it, Morty. I know you were sucking the Kool-Aid out of the Vindicator's dick, so the fact that I was right about that must be pretty hard to admit. Yeah, it is. You know why, Rick? Because when you're an asshole, it doesn't matter how right you are. Nobody wants to give you the satisfaction. And yes, he was better than you. Yeah. One million times better. Oh, oh shit. Whoa. When this is over. He wants our last moment alive to be spent knowing how few fucks he gave. Jesus. Okay, open to second opinions. It could, it could be Morty. What? Hey, I don't know. I mean, look, when I get drunk, I get stupid and emotional, and there's no logic to it. It's like, it's possible I got so drunk, I felt like I was losing Morty to the Vindicators, and maybe this is my way of saying, okay, you can have him, but only if you know how important he is, otherwise I'll kill you. That is a really specific guess. Look, I'm not good at goodbyes, and I'm drunk, so, you know, I just, it looks like I'm never gonna see you again. I can't really roll with the hero types, and I don't, they, they don't want me around, but I want you to know, even if I didn't show it at the time, I really appreciated you sticking by me. God damn it, why am I crying? This makes no sense. Ugh, you're, you're probably confused because we barely know each other, but you really stuck your neck out when you gave me props for my awesome jokes in the briefing room. Everybody else had their heads so far up their ass, even my own grandson is like, oh, the Vindicator is so cool. Wait, he thinks the I mean, Noob Noob was going to be there with him? I think so. You're different, Noob Noob. Motherfucker. We could have hung out. I hope you get to be a full-fledged Vindicator. Do me a favor. Don't let him know it. I got emotional, but you can tell him one thing. Tell him I said... Oh, fuck. Okay, I just shit myself. <laughs> that face. <laughs> Dude, Morty, what happened to- Shut up! You were always the romantic, which is why you can't leave either. I'm sorry, my love. Ooh. Damn, she double-crossed Snuzzles! <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Let's give a huge thanks to Rick Sanchez for killing World Ender, putting this awesome party together, and for booking one of the hottest talents out there, Friggin' logic. This is two two train man, he's rolling down tragedy. Everybody knows supernova fight. Wait, is, is logic a real person? Yeah. Who cares? yeah. Oh. He's a rapper. Morty, twenty people he... try to kill me every week. I end up getting high with half of them. I mean, check it out, gearheads here. Hmm. Oh, that's shoot through me. Bitches come around for no, no. his dick gets more business than you too. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. See, uh, okay, I'll tell you the thing about Logic. Logic got popular a couple years ago, or a few years ago right now, uh, for a song uh, that was literally the suicide hotline number. And it talked about, like, you know, the pressures that you're feeling, you know, just, just, uh, you know, just sing, you know, just type in this song's. Uh, type in this song and get some help and all that and it was it was beautiful it was actually a really poignant song but since then logic hasn't really done that much don't get me wrong he's fast he raps really fast but 
you can rap fast, but if you don't say anything of substance, it doesn't really mean anything. And that's unfortunately what's happened with Logic. He seems to have fallen off of a, a creative cliff, and now instead of... can't remember who told me, and it might be controversial to talk about it. I'm not 100% sure, but I heard that he has since bragged in another song about this, making money off of that song. Yes, he did. And that's kind of... That's kind of sketchy. A little bit. And the thing is, I mean, if you want to humble brag, okay, but at the same time, you're talking about suicide, man. That's something that's very, very, like, serious. And especially when you wanted to portray yourself as someone who was taking it seriously, but now you're acting nonchalant about it. It's kind of paints like a, a crossways picture that doesn't really make much sense. I, just, I was just curious if he was a real person. I don't know crap about rap, so. It's fine, yeah, it's fine. Is. But he's he's he has some pretty cool stuff back in the day, but... Oh. So cool! I know. Wait, what alter ego? He was already wearing the jacket. <laughs> and he's gone. Got to know when to hold him. <laughs> Did you get any of that? Well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I mean, no when to hold him, no when to. Uh, oh. I think we'll see him again. He seems to be pretty good at putting himself back together. <clears throat> God. So yeah. I think we all know exactly what the hell that was a parody of. I mean, I kind of felt like I was watching uh, The Boys a little bit. Yeah. Like the dysfunctional, like, Justice League knockoffs. They're, uh... <laughs> yeah, they're making fun of, like, the superhero team-up movies. Yeah. Uh, Avengers being the most prominent. Because, yeah, the guy who voiced Christian Slater, obviously Star-Lord. Mm -hmm. Obviously. And, of course, you know, I, the rest of them, Crocubot, I don't know. I don't know where he would fit in that. Um, I guess uh, Supernova could be... Starfire. Starfire, maybe, or Captain Marvel, I don't know. I mean, you know, they pretty much made Captain Marvel god tier because even though with, <coughs> you know, her powers she gained, which she gained from one... Infinity Stone. She was able to take on Thanos with all six Infinity Stones. I mean, you know, fuck logic, right? Not the rapper. That'd be weird. But, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, superhero logic. So, yeah, what do you want to do? So, Rick pretty much just got shit-faced and uh, did, uh, you know, did some very bad things there, which... What else is new? That's kind of funny that people always like talk about like their evil twin or like how they would be if their alignment shifted, you know. But then it's like Rick has that. It's just, but when he's drunk, yeah. So it's like, okay, watch out. Blackout ways that <laughs> he becomes a monster. Well, he he already is like an unfeeling asshole. Yeah. But when he drinks, he becomes a psychotic, unfeeling asshole. That is pretty funny because I honestly thought they were going to give Morty like a touching moment because they sort of hint at it here and there, and it's like, nope. He only cared about noob noob. Yeah. Wow. And then at the end, Rick's Morty's just like, who the fuck is noob noob? Yeah. I, I love uh, Morty's response. He's like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it was too good. Yeah. And then, of course, there was also the part where, uh, you know, you could actually see in the background of Rick's videos that were playing during e uh, right as they entered each new trap, you could see, like, the cardboard cutouts and stuff that he'd made. Of, and like, you could the see them. Yeah. Scenery thing. Yeah, you could see them. And those come into play during the last uh, part of the trap. Well, and it's just like, damn, that's really cool. I think the best part about it is there was no contingency. Like, in his drunk mind, he was so sure they would put Noob Noob in it that, you know, whoever he put in it, it still would have been right. There was no, like, yeah. testing for it. He's just, his, he's like, obviously they're going to put Noob Noob in this. Yeah, because obviously Noob Noob's the only one I really care about because... You know, he, he well, liked I my think jokes. actually it was supposed to be Noob Noob, but it was just Morty's basically the same size as Noob Noob. Uh, maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay. Oh, so that'd it was be... like the contraption mistook, like the weight or whatever. I just assumed that he thought it was so obvious there was no way they could get it wrong. He didn't even rig it to explode if they, you know, could tried be. somebody else. Yeah. And then, I, I feel like that's what would have really hacked Morty off. And then, of course, there was all the Vindicators dying during this. Who do you think had, like, the worst slash most memorable death? Golly. 
I don't know, having a million ants crawl in your mouth and explode you from the inside seems pretty gruesome. Yeah, but... It seemed instantaneous, though. Yeah. I don't know, there's a point where he was kind of like... Yeah, he... uh, He blowed it up like a Yokozuna sumo wrestler. The other dude got, like, fucking wrecked when he flew up in the vent. (laughs) By all kinds of stuff. I mean, one would imagine the the preliminary gunfire would have taken him out and he wouldn't have felt, like, all the rest of it. Yeah, possibly. Maybe. I don't know, though. He has probably, like, a superhero suit on with some armor, so... Yeah. Might not have died right away. (laughs) I actually saw a hilarious post one time. Uh, You know, whenever uh, Christian Slater's character tried to fly off, before that, he was like, I need... I need space. This is triggering me. I need my space. And he flies up. Uh, there was actually a hilarious one. Uh, it was uh, lettering over top of him. It's like Tumblrite, and then that vent is reality. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he just gets destroyed. <laughs> oh, God. I was Yikes. just like, oh. Oh. True. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. Vindicators 3, The Return of World Ender. Wasn't much of a return. I mean, he just made, like, one appearance still alive, and he was just like, I'm dead. And then the true villain revealed himself. So are we to assume that all the minions that were, like, murdered in those awkward sex positions, that was also Rick? Yes. (laughs) Because I guarantee you he wanted to just, like, fuck everything up. That's super messed up. It is, dude. That's that's super messed up. Well, well, putting dead bodies in, like, like, very, like, sexually precarious positions is just disturbing to think about. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping they were already dead when he positioned them mm. and he didn't make them like do it and then murder them. I saw, uh, yeah. I just had a mental picture in my head and I, I don't want to, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't want to think about that. Uh, we're going to move on from this, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rick and Morty, uh, season three, episode four, Vindicators three, the return of world ender. Oh, God. This was a hell of an episode, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. So, I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. Micah. I'm Nick. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace out.